Does it make any sense to send your child to prom in a Rolls Royce? A helicopter? Welcome back to the channel. I got something I want to talk to you guys about today. It's more or less of a rant. Guys, we all know right now it's prom season. And um, in prom season seems to bring out the extravagance. But guys, what I want to talk to you guys about today though, is some of the things that I have seen back in the community where I grew up in some other um, communities. Um, I just want to talk about these extravagant proms that I have seen and witnessed. Guys, I've seen individuals show up in a helicopter. I've seen individuals show up to prom in a limousine. Guys, I've seen people show up to proms in a horse and carriage. I've seen individuals show up to these proms, pictures, and rented Rolls Royces. And all of this is happening. What I've seen all of this extravagant things happening. This Most of the pictures I've seen have come out of these poor underperforming school districts. What's the message that we're sending to our children, guys? Does it make any sense to send your child to prom in a horse and carriage? Really? In a rented Rolls Royce? A helicopter? Guys, that makes no financial sense. And like I said, this is what's going on in the poor communities, the underperforming school districts. These people are broke. They don't have the money for this. Let me ask you a question. Do you think, do you honestly think these parents have the money to pay for this? I see a lot of miss, miss rents. I see a lot of late mortgage payments. I see a lot of late car notes being paid. I see credit card debt. I see payday loans being taken out. They don't have the money to do, do this. But again, we don't have the money and we're living above our means. Guys, this is where people have to take stock of their financial life and make better financial decisions and figure out where the priorities are. Guys, when my daughter graduated high school five years ago, me and my ex-wife, we probably had a combined income, probably right under 200 grand a year. But do you think she went to school in a rented Rolls Royce to her prom in a rented Rolls Royce? No. Went to her prom in a, in a horse and carriage? No, she got a nice dress and she went to prom because we have our priorities right. So what I, what I would like to ask these parents who did this for, the, for their children, do you got life insurance? Do you have savings? Do you have an emergency fund? Do you have a college fund for your child? You're doing all of this extravagant things to send them to one event, a prom. And guys, I'm not trying to minimize a prom. A prom is important. But do you need to go in debt for a prom? I don't think so. That should not be the priority. But again, we live above our means with this YOLO lifestyle. And then we do things for our children that we cannot afford. Guys, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going into debt so my son or daughter can, um, can land at prom in a helicopter. It's just not happening. We got to line up our priorities in the right way. And it's really a shame, like I said, that I really, where I really see this is in the poor, underprivileged communities. Like where I grew up, where it's high crime, high unemployment, underperforming school districts, no jobs. People are broke, depressed, and, dist and in distress. But we're sending our kids to prom and rented exotic cars, helicopters, horse and carriages. Guys, guys we just got to do better than this. This is why people are broke and have no money and deeply in debt because their financial priorities are just totally wrong in the wrong spot. Guys, we have got to do better. We have got to make better financial decisions. If you don't care about your financial well-being, well, I'm here to tell you, you should care. You should care because if you're struggling now, working an everyday job and you're not saving you're not invested into retirement. You don't have an emergency fund. Guess what? You are going to struggle in retirement. Because if you can't make it now, what do you think is going to happen when you're only getting 50 to 60% of your income at retirement? You're going to really be struggling. So guys, so I really want you guys to, th to think about this. Guys, please like this video. Please share the video. And most importantly, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys. Guys, one thing you're going to get from me from my channel is just honesty transparency and, and just advice on what I would do 
in certain situations because as I've stated before, I'm consumer debt free. All I have is a mortgage. I put a lot of um, um, time into learning about finances and investing in things of that nature. And I would like to think, you know, from the things that I've learned and implemented, you know, that I'm doing okay. And I just want to give this knowledge out to other individuals because you can build wealth as an average individual. You don't need a super high paying job, but you do need to be get out of consumer debt, save and invest. And you have to do, be consistent with it, guys. You have to be consistent. So guys, once again, thank you for tuning into my video today. I appreciate the support. Again, guys, remember, financial decisions you make today, whether they're negative or positive, will have that same in impact on you tomorrow, whether those decisions were negative or positive. Guys, thanks again for tuning in. Financial Freedom Team with Frank, we are out.